there's a certain relationship between racialism and Nordicism even where they disagree and so people who don't believe in racialism and argue against it use similar arguments to the people who are racialists or partly racialists but don't believe in Nordicism and so in the historical record we have the circumstance in which the south or the Mediterranean basin was once the center of European civilization. It had the great empires, it had the big states, it had the innovation, it had the high population. And then at a certain point in history that shifts northward into Germany, England, and France, and now it's the northern European uh, areas in which all the scientific innovations are coming from. That's where the, um, uh, the, uh, the big states and the empires are all located there, you know, even uh, the Netherlands and Belgium. So everybody uh, who matters, it shifts up northward. So how do we make sense out of that? Now the Nordicists would say that Nordic people are the pivot of history. They're the moving, the moving power of the European uh, organism and wherever they go is where things are going to work out best. And so the uh, anti-Nordicists would, would make the same argument that the anti-racialists would make and say, well, look at this change that occurred. You know, it used to be uh, the Mediterranean was the center and then now it's, now it's Northern Europe. So clearly your theory can't work because the most Nordic people or the racially most pure Nordics, either, either however you define it, they would have been in the North. And so you should have seen Britain and Scandinavia building up these gigantic empires with all these innovations when in fact their ability to write things down appears to be much less than the Mediterranean peoples a couple thousand years ago and three thousand years ago. So how do we make sense out of all this? This is still uh, a set of arguments that people are going over today. You know. And, E. Michael Jones is, I think, infamous for having said that uh, the Catholics in Rome, the Catholics in Italy, were already building great civilization when his ancestors from Germany were chasing pigs through a forest. Uh, and this, you know, this remark is infamous in its stupidity. Now, um, and also it's uh, denigration of one's ancestors, which is a horrible thing to do. You know, we should, we should blame our ancestors for the things that they did that were wrong and not the things they did that were good, like living close to nature and living in accordance with nature and uh, killing animals and eating them themselves rather than consuming meat uh, that came out of a factory farm, right? So uh, how do we make sense out of this? Now, Nietzsche and Hitler both argued that civilization was really created by slavery all right civilization in, in this, you can find this in Mein Kampf go look at the Thomas Dalton translation or translate it yourself or you can go read Nietzsche I think in the genealogy of morals probably the second essay but I'm not quite sure about that it's been a while since I've looked at it but the claim is that slavery creates civilization you have to have a master race, okay? You have to have a group of people with really high native ability. These would be the Aryans, the Nordics, the master race, whatever you want to call it. They have to conquer an area of people who are racially distinct from themselves. They have to subjugate those people and then they have to put them to work. And what they do is by creating these human cattle, they give themselves uh, leisure time, surplus resources and then create a giant pool of labor upon which they will draw and that is where civilization comes from it doesn't come from groups of hunter gatherers who start farming and then build this bigger city and that bigger city no according to nietzsche and hitler it always comes from slavery now that wasn't to say that they thought that slavery was a good thing this is the Hegelian view of history in which you say how did we get from where we were to where we are well we got to it through slavery and we appreciate the fact that we now have this civilization we don't necessarily want to return to any other state any prior uh, historical point we're just recognizing what happened how it happened and why it happened so um, 
why am I why am I relating this to Nordicism and racialism? It should be pretty clear. Um, the argument out of Houston, Stuart Chamberlain, and then probably Gobineau and all these other people of that persuasion, would be that the Roman Empire, the Athenian Empire, the Spartans, all of these ancient civil the Persians. Uh, the ancient Indians and in, the, the ancient Aryans in India, whatever civilization, whatever group of people you're talking about, they reached a high level of civilization in the Mediterranean basin or outside of it because they were Nordic Aryan type people. They moved in, they conquered, and they enslaved the indigenous populations and they put them to work and they built this stuff up. Then, over a period of hundreds to a thousand years, they interbred with them to the point where there was no longer that obvious racial distinction between the groups of people and then things had equalized enough to break down the social structure, the racial se segregation and separation that had been established and things slowly started to fall apart. Now uh, around this time other uh, elite races I guess you could say Germanics and Mongols for instance came in and swept this crap away because it had become so weak. And there's another good Nietzsche quote, that which is falling must also be pushed, and there will always be people to push you. There are people pushing us right now because we are weak and we're falling. And maybe we want to even help push a little bit and then we'll get up ourselves and knock the dust off. Uh, anyhow, I think you get my point. You understand what I'm trying to say. There's the I'll re try to recapitulate this quickly. There's an argument that uh, racialism and particularly Nordicism cannot be true because we observe the civilizations of the Mediterranean basin to have once been dominant. They are no longer dominant and the Northern Europeans are dominant. The claim is that if Nordic, Aryan, whatever you want to call them, if those people were the best people, the most capable people, then it would not have been the Mediterranean civilizations that were dominant in antiquity, it would have been the civilizations of the North. I'm saying that Nietzsche and Hitler already solved this over a hundred years ago by saying that these civilizations emerged because the conquerors came in and used slavery to create civilization. So it's perfectly consistent with uh, you know, Houston, Stuart Chamberlain, Gobineau, all, all of these same type of people. And uh, that's why you find it in both Nietzsche and um, Hitler. Okay. Thank you, guys.